Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to mount your base shakers to your aluminium profile sim rig using only a piece of wood and some bolts. So ever since I moved over from my wheel stand, which I had slightly Frankenstein to turn into a full uh, sit-in cockpit, and I had these attached to it as well, I found that with my sim rig, my aluminium profile rig, it's been a bit lacking the racing. I haven't had much feel since I've gotten rid of the base shakers. And I think with these little base shakers, they're one of those sort of things when you've used them once, it's very hard to go back to not using them when you're racing. And so I've been finding the racing a little bit lackluster lately. So I decided I wanted to mount my base shakers to my aluminium profile rig. And as stated at the start of the video, all you're going to need is a piece of wood, a few bolts, and a few basic enough tools. Okay, so if you have an aluminium profile rig, and you have your seat mounted using side mounts like these ones here, then you're going to be able to do this. Because all we're going to be doing is using the four mounting holes that are underneath the seat, and we're going to be connecting that piece of wood up to them using four bolts, and then we're going to mount the base shakers on that piece of wood. So all you're going to want to do is measure the distance between the four holes underneath your seat, get a piece of plywood or something similar, and then cut that piece of wood. But you're going to want to leave the piece of wood a little bit bigger, a few centimetres bigger on each side than the distance between the holes on the underneath of your seat. So say for example if the distance between two of the holes on my seat was 30 centimetres, you're going to want to leave it at like 34 or 35. Basically you want it big enough so that you can drill a few holes up through it and for there to still be some overhang on each side but not so big that it won't fit between the two side mount brackets on your chair. Now, I already cut my piece of wood earlier, and I'm going to show you that now. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is cut this piece of wood I have here. You can see here, with the pencil marks, where I have it marked out. And you can see here, where I've already done some test cuts with my jigsaw to make sure that this wood wasn't going to chip too much or look too damaged from using the jigsaw on it. Now, you can use whatever you want to cut this. You can use a hacksaw, a handsaw, a circular saw, anything you want at all. Anything just to get the job done. A jigsaw is just going to be my tool of preference in this instance. So without any further ado, I'm going to get to cutting this now and I'll show you what it looks like inside. Okay, so now that I've cut that piece of wood, I'm going to measure the distance between the holes on the underneath of my seat. Now, I already did this roughly earlier, so I knew what dimensions to cut this piece of wood to, but I'm going to be more exact in my measuring now. And then I'm going to put some markings on this piece of wood and drill four holes through it so that I can then put four bolts through to mount it to the bottom of my chair. Now, very important as well, guys, don't forget when you're measuring these holes, you have to measure the distance from centre to centre of each hole. Don't go from the edge to edge or anything else because it won't line up properly. You have to go from centre to centre. So now, as you can see, I have it marked out. These points at which it intersects, where the line intersects, that's where I'm going to be drilling out holes. You saw me kind of marking that out with a ruler there. It would be better if you had a set square or something like that, or a T-square, just to be that bit more precise. But for now anyway, I'm going to drill them out and see if they line up. So when you're drilling your holes, just make sure you get a drill bit about half a size or one size up from the size of the bolt that you're using that fits into the bottom of your chair. And I'm going to be drilling through this piece of wood on my floor. If you're going to be doing the same thing, just make sure you put something underneath so that you don't go right into your floor. Because, uh, especially if you're renting, I don't think your landlords will appreciate that. Okay, so now I'm back out in the shed at the moment. Um, I've drilled my four holes in each corner. And as you can see, I kind of did the more like runner holes. I'm not sure if that's the technical term that we use, but that's what I'm going to call them. So I didn't just drill one hole in each corner and that was it. What I did was I drilled two holes a couple of mil apart in each corner and then 
just drilled out the middle then to make a bigger hole and what that does then is that it means if I'm slightly out with any of my measurements or anything it means that the whole thing isn't going to be thrown off because of that so it kind of gives a bit of play in each direction I have a bit more margin for error and I am going to show you then how I mount this piece of wood then onto my rig now that the holes are drilled but before I do that I just want to give this a coat of paint just to make it blend in a bit better look a bit sleeker on the rig so that it's not a grey piece standing out against a full black rig so I picked up a cheap can of spray paint there the other day. We've got that just here. And rigged up a little contraption here. And we're just gonna throw some spray paint on this. Now I've also got this mask here I'm gonna be wearing as well. Don't forget to always use a mask if you're gonna be using spray paint as there is some very harmful chemicals in there. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so now I've got one coat of paint on it. It's looking a little bit better. Uh, I can smell the fumes in here, so I'm going to get out of here, let that dry off a bit, and then I'm going to hit it with another coat. Okay, so now that I've sprayed the piece of wood black, and it looks pretty okay, I didn't try to do a perfect job or anything, but it looks good enough that it'll blend in with the rig at least. The next step I want to do now is to mount the base shaker to the piece of wood. So I have these mounts here, that it, I can't remember if it actually came with them or if I had to buy them separately, but either way I have them. And they just take three screw holes, so the base shaker sits into that, and then three screws go in through there. So I'm going to mount that there now. Okay, so now that that's mounted and it's very secure, it was easy to do as well, only took a minute or two. I'm going to mount the amplifier to the board as well. To do that, I'm going to use some double-sided tape. There's many different ways you could do this. You could use double-sided tape, you could use hot glue even. Uh, there's loads of ways, you know, you can even make a, some sort of bracket for your amplifier and just screw it on, kind of like what I did with the bass shaker here. So there's a ton of different ways you can do this, but I'm going to set about the way I'm going to do it right now. Okay, so now that was obviously very quick and easy, so I'm just going to peel off the paper on the other layer, the other side of the double-sided tape. And now I'm simply going to stick my amplifier to that. Now, I am just going to hold that in place for a couple of seconds. So that's pretty much it now guys, that's all the hard part done. Basically all we have to do now is just to connect the bass shaker to the amplifier through the speaker wire here and just mount this plate, this uh, piece of wood then to the bottom of the rig. So I have a couple of extra holes now in this as well because basically lack of forward thinking. Basically what I was going to do originally was run this through a connector terminal and then to the amp. But I thought why not just use or move the bass shaker closer to the amp and then have it directly going in there it's you know less fuss then I can literally just wire these straight in here so I'm going to connect the bass shaker now and the amplifier and as you can see now guys there we have it we've got the bass shaker and the amplifier connected so basically it's just a case of plugging your power into your amp and setting up your software down in, then on your PC I'm just going to mount this then to the bottom of my rig now, and that's the last step. So I didn't want to take my seat off as I've got it mounted in the exact position that's correct for me, and I only just sort of aligned it properly a couple of weeks ago, so I didn't want to go through the hassle of that again. So I've just turned my rig on the side for you guys to see this properly. So these are the four bolt holes I'm going to be using here to mount the plate. So I'm going to get to that now, and that is the last thing. Okay, and as you can see guys, that's it. Our uh, piece of wood with our bass shaker and our amplifier is now mounted to the bottom of the seat. Um, which is great because, you know, we're not going to lose any vibration then through the rig. It's directly mounted to the seat. We're going to maximize the effects that we feel then in-game. Now, somehow during that whole process, I seem to lose a bolt that I had. So this is only actually mounted with three bolts, but as you can see... It is very solid, I can't really even move that, so uh, three bolts is more than enough to hold it. And basically all you'll have to do then to set this up to run is just get your software on your PC, SIM hub or whatever you're using, and set up your base shakers then, set up your base shaker profile, whatever game you're using, and uh, that's it, you're good to go. I'm not going to show the software side of it because I basically just copied someone else's setup that they had for it, 
and that's worked completely fine for me so but that's it guys that's my solution to a relatively common question i see coming up in sim racing communities and stuff like that i think this is a pretty easy way of anyone who wants to mount a base shaker to their aluminium profile rig of doing so i don't know if every single seat has a uh, mountain holes on the bottom so that you can follow the same procedure as i did but if not there are many different ways you could do it anyway you could drill in through the the side brackets on your seat just drill a hole through them and then drill into the piece of wood like what i had there and still mount your bay shaker to your wood in the same way just the only difference that instead of the wood being held then by the seat it's just being held in by the brackets by the screw that you've drilled in through the side brackets but anyway that's it for this video guys so if you did like the video please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll chat to you all again soon bye guys